This is Actar's Reviews, from anime to figures and beyond. This is Ektar and welcome to another episode of Ektar's Figure Reviews. Today, we are taking a look at something which I think can be considered a grail for many Full Metal Panic fans like myself. Presenting... Alters take on none other than the main mecha from the series, Full Metal Panic the Second Raid, The Arbalest, piloted by protagonist Sagara Sosuke. Undoubtedly best known for their outstanding completed PVC figures of anime heroines, Alter does have a lesser known subline of mecha figures fittingly named All Mecha. Launching in 2008, the armless that you see before you is the second release in the line, hitting store shelves in June 2009. The main aim of this line is to provide collectors with the ultimate in mechanical models. Completed full action models with unsurpassed details, articulation, features and accessories. And evidently, the Arblist was extremely well received by fans because these are now nearly impossible to find. But after all these years of kicking myself for not getting it when it was first released and trying to make do with the robot Damashi, I finally managed to get my hands on one. So let's take a look and see if this figure truly lives up to its reputation. Aside from the really cinematic and dramatic image of the Arbalest on the front and the usual stuff like the names and logos, we have a classic collector's flip top lid held close to my magnets that reveals the figure and its accessories. Definitely adds to the prestige of this packaging. On the back, we are treated with a short write up and various stats of the Arbalest and some information on the actual figure. Of course, we have the usual collage of pictures showing off the various features that the figure has to offer and the contents of the box. And speaking of the contents, let's open this up and take a look at the figure inside. The instruction sheet that it comes with isn't too impressive and is nothing when compared to the Soul of Chogokin spec ones. I really would have loved a little bit more, I don't know, colour and perhaps some added information on the Arbalest. Not to mention, I feel that the drawn diagrams, while not horrible, do a pretty poor job in illustrating the figure's functions. Confusion is bound to ensue, especially if you can't read Japanese. For a figure this complex, clear instructions are key to avoiding any potential mishaps. And here we have the Sosuke's iconic arm slave, the Arbalest. But before we get into the review proper, I think that the size comparison is in order. And here's the figure together with the robot Damashi Arbalest. And as you can see, Alter's Arbalest at 160 scale dwarfs the robot Damashi figure. And with a bigger scale comes a bigger possibilities. So the thing that first strikes you when you take the figure out of the box, other than its size, is undeniably its superb details. If the fully painted panel lines don't convince you, the temple printed a minute text sprinkled all over the obelisk such as on its back, its arms, its legs, and even on its chest surely will. I mean, these tiny specks are minuscule warnings and caution notices that are commonly seen on actual machinery. The printing is so sharp and precise that you can actually read the text if you have a powerful enough magnifying glass. This is the level of intricacy that we are dealing with here. Yeah, some might be disappointed with the lack of any stickers or decals, but as I always say, with tempo prints like these, who needs stickers? And of course, the sculpting and other paint applications are precise and spot on. The yellow highlights and aforementioned panel lines exemplify this. But that is just the tip of the iceberg, for you see, in addition to the painted details, this figure is also a near perfect replica of the on-screen mecha in terms of engineering and hidden mechanical detail. So without further ado, here is a rundown of all the features of this figure. First off, something that was sorely missed on the Robot Damashi version, an openable cockpit. But before we can open it, we have to pull this chest panel forwards and slide the Arbalist's head forward to unlock the cockpit hatch. Looking inside, we can see that Alter was kind enough to provide a tiny, unremovable figure of Sagara. Despite the small size, Sagara's suit, arms and face all have little dabs of paint. The maintenance hatch on the back of the Arbalest is also openable to reveal more hidden mechanical detail. We have to push on the bottom to cause the panel to pop open slightly, giving you sufficient leverage to pull it open. 
Next up, we have something that was also missing from the Robot Zamashi version, and that is base to store its secondary weapons like the anti-tank daggers and hand grenades. These are located at the undersides of the Arbalest's torso. And now here is where I have to bring up one of the minor inconveniences of this figure. And that is, some of the parts are so small that they might require the use of an implement to help manipulate into position. One is provided with the figure, but I prefer using my own. All you have to do to open them is to simply slide them down into position. Unfortunately, the stored weapons are just for show and not removable. The weapon base themselves do come off and can be swapped with each other. And now we come to the main feature of the Arbalest, the Lambda Driver. As Full Metal Panic fans know, during its activation, the shoulders splay open and the back panels fold open to reveal the radiation fins. In other figures, this was done through part swapping, but that is not the case for this Arbalest. The shoulder and back mechanisms, save for the extending radiation fins, are all recreated and completely functional. To go about transforming the shoulders, first pop the arm off to get better access to the shoulder piece. Then we extend the top piece, flip this piece up, open the shoulder, go inside and push the little bar outwards till you hear a click. Lastly, pull down the internal fin to finish up the transformation. Honestly, this is the epitome of intricacy. I still cannot believe all the engineering that was crammed into that one tiny shoulder piece. Just like the shoulders, the back panels feature a transformation gimmick. The top panel flips up, the bottom panel pulls out and folds down, and the middle panel angles down. As said previously, the radiation fins are the only things that necessitate any additional parts. The larger fins simply peg into the openings between the panels, and the bottom ones peg into the bottom panels themselves. Yeah, it would have been beyond brilliant to have them actually fold out, but looking at the space constraints and the thinness of the fins, there is no way that this could have been physically possible on a figure of this scale. Still, I have to say that the activated look is absolutely magnificent, and the sheer fact that the figure can achieve this through transformation, as opposed to full-on part swapping, is phenomenal. In terms of articulation, this figure hits another home run, if not for its possibility, then for the innovations that the figure has relating to its articulation. Its head is on a full ball joint, these side torso pieces can move forwards and backwards and up and down, its arms can move up and down at the body as well as forwards and back, the arms themselves are possible at the shoulder forwards and backwards and in and out, do note that the shoulder piece is separately articulated. When the shoulder piece is in its open configuration, the in and out articulation of the arm is slightly hindered albeit very slightly. There is a swivel joint just below the shoulder and the elbows are double jointed. Speaking of which, here is innovation number one. This panel can be depressed into the arm to extend its range of movement. All that is required to put it back into place is straightening the arm. This panel is there purely for aesthetic purposes and it is the little touches like these that add to the high-end feel of the figure. The torso can move forwards and backwards and the waist is on a swivel joint. Moving on to the legs, we come to another two innovations. First, this blue panel can slide downwards to enable the leg to achieve a greater forwards movement. Furthermore, the legs are connected to a swing bar that is held in place by a sliding lock. Using the included tool, sliding the lock open, swinging the bar down and locking it back in place gives the legs even more clearance from the back pieces and waist for additional forwards and backwards movement. Finishing off the legs as you've probably already seen, they can move forwards and backwards, in and out and side to side, the knees are double jointed, and so are the feet, with the bottom joint being a ball joint. Last but not least, the front of the foot is separately articulated from the rest of the foot. While the articulation is truly superb, as it does allow you to get the figure into some outstanding poses, I am not satisfied with the waist and leg articulation. Some side to side movement in the waist would have been much appreciated and I think that the legs in and out, side to side and knee articulation is too restricted. For one, the figure still cannot get into a convincing kneeling pose, the ultimate test of a figure's articulation. Last but not least, we come to the accessories, and in this respect, the figure doesn't disappoint either. Now, I won't be saying this for each and every accessory I show, but do note that the level of detail that the figure boasts is carried over to the accessories. First, we have the shotgun. Like any good shotgun accessory, you can cock it, and it does have a foldable stock. 
Next, we not only have one, but two monomolecular cutters and two sheaves. Why two? Because one of them, the one with the peg, is for attaching to the side of the arbalist and one is for clipping onto its back. This way, you are even free to equip the arbalist with dual monomolecular cutters. To clip the weapons onto the arbalist's back, two mounting latches are provided, one for the gun and one for the monomolecular cutter. These split apart and reattach over the chosen weapon before pegging into the figure's back. Moving on, we have, surprise surprise, two spare shoulder pieces. Now nothing, and I mean nothing, says I care about you more than spare parts. These are exactly the same as the ones on the Arbalest. Aside from using them as backups in case of breakage, you can also leave these in their open configuration and treat them as regular exchangeable shoulder pieces if you don't want to go through the hassle of transforming them. Remember the weapon base and the non-removable anti-tank dagger and hand grenade? Well, the next set of accessories to come with the figure are indeed a pair of anti-tank daggers and hand grenades. Interestingly enough, I think that these were meant strictly as prop accessories as Alter already included a pair of exchangeable hands holding on to a hand grenade and an anti-tank dagger. A very, very nice touch if I do say so myself, as the anti-tank daggers and hand grenades would have been a chore to fit in the exchangeable hands due to their minute size. And regarding the anti-tank dagger, this figure does not come with an exchangeable head with the dagger clipped to its mouth. But then again, this is supposed to be a representation of the Arbalest from the second season, so I guess it's kind of understandable as to why they didn't include it. Anyways, on the topic of exchangeable hands, we are given 6 more in the package. 2 splayed open hands, 2 knife holding hands, and 2 gun holding hands. In case you are a stickler for details and did not like the exposed holes on the sides of the Arbalest, Alta has foreseen that eventuality and included a detailed application parts that take the form of four plastic bolts that are meant to cover up these holes. And lastly, what's a high-end figure without its very own display stand? The final accessory for the Arbalest is precisely that, a classy black stand and base with the Arbalest's name and stats tempo printed on it. The stand itself is your usual three-jointed stand with an added side-to-side -side movement in the attachment piece. This connector piece clips easily and snugly into the bottom of the Arbalest. But if you want to pose the Arbalest with the swing bar deployed, an alternate connector piece is provided. However, a screwdriver is needed to swap the attachment pieces. A screwdriver is also required to tighten up the stand if you want it to be able to spot any mid-air or truly dynamic poses. In conclusion, I have to say that the 160th scale Arbalest figure by Alter is unequivocally the definitive Arbalest figure that any Full Metal Panic fan should own. The intricate engineering, the stellar details, the superb articulation, the outstanding accessories, and the amazing features ranging from the openable cockpit to the transforming shoulders all come together and make this figure practically a masterpiece level and a near perfect representation of the on-screen mecha. But of course, there are still some negatives to the figure. Aside from the slightly hindered leg and waist articulation, it would have been nice to have seen the arm cable slash grappling hook being included as well. Also, the figure does have more of a completed model feel to it, meaning to say that it won't hold up to rough play. But then again, I don't suppose any sane collector would throw such an expensive figure across the room. That being said, as it stands, if you are a die-hard fan of the mecha or the series like I am, this figure by Alter provides you with everything that you need to recreate any of the Arbalest's captivating battles in the Kanka Autonomous Region, Helmajistan or Hong Kong. So, this is Zekta saying, see you guys in the next episode.